Welcome to an Adventure in Choosing, a game book podcast where I, your book guide, Mike Nevada, read through what are generically called game books. Now, these aren't normal books with only one measly ending. No, sir, game books like the Choose Your Own Adventure series requires the reader to make crucial decisions for the protagonist that branch off into a multiverse of endings, depending on the choices the reader makes. Some of them are good endings, but most of them, and that's what makes this game so fun and in grim ways. Will our hero have a happy ending? Let's find out in a brand new episode of An Adventure in Choosing. Today's hero is... Jibby Santos. What's up? What's up? What's up? Well, uh, tell us about yourself. What, what, what's going on with your life? Um, I'm unemployed. <laughs> I think that's all we need to know. We play video games and uh, every day. Yeah, and we thought we'd play something really cool. Um, so, all right, the rules of this podcast are simple. It's all about choices. First choice is what adventure you'll be going on today. So you have four books from this box set uh, with over 150 different endings, from what I hear. Is it 150 per book or 150 No, total? like all together. Oh. Let's go in order. All right. In this box set, the first one is The Abominable Snowman right. with over 28 different endings. 28? Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Journey Under the Sea, which has 42 endings. You got Space and Beyond, uh, which has 42 endings. And The Lost Jewels of Nabuti, which is 38 endings. Jeez. Oh. I don't know. Let's go for... What do you think, Mike? Mike, um, Mike would probably do the space one. I, yeah, I would normally do the space but one. But Space and Beyond has a picture of a spaceship and a dinosaur, so I don't know. That's pretty... Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Wait, let me let me look at the others. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, shit. I don't know. Let's just pick... Let's just do the Lost Jewels of Nabuti. The Lost Jewels of Nabuti. Okay, it got me with booty. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay. Second choice before you go on your adventure, like any good game, is deciding the difficulty level. Hard. Super hard. Uh, we Hardest. have four options. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just have to explain it. Uh, easy mode gives you three lives. Okay. We have normal mode gives you two lives. Okay. All right. Uh, hard mode gives you one life. And, of course, epic mode is like real life. You get no lives. And when you die, the game and our adventure is over. Oh, okay. So I can, like, die after, like, two... Yeah, so chapters. You can take backsies. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now let's 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 do the super hard one. It'll be more fun. E- epic mode. Epic mode. All right. So you gotta be. <laughs> this might be the shortest episode of our podcast. So well, I mean, they wouldn't make it for kids if you died after like the first crossing in your first yeah, pathway. There's gonna be one episode. Like, do you go on the adventure? No, <laughs> and then you just <laughs> and then you stop. Uh, you live the rest of your life. And uh, so yeah, if you successfully finish one of these adventures with a happy ending, your team, well, in this case, just you, just me. Uh, uh, will be added to the Hall of Winners under the chosen difficulty level. So you'll, if you win this in epic mode, you'll be the very first real champion. Okay. Okay. Let's start with the Lost Jewels of Nabuti, written by R. A. Montgomery. The book is dedicated to Ramsey and Anson and to Shannon. Wow. All right. No. Beware and warning. This book is different from other books. You and you alone, Chibi, are in charge of what happens in the story. There are dangers, choices, adventures, and consequences. You must use all your numerous talents and much of your enormous intelligence. The wrong decision could end in disaster, even death. But don't despair. Anytime you 
can go back and make another choice, except for you, because it's, because it's epic. epic mode. Okay. Um, alter the path of your story and change its results. You are about to embark on a search with your cousins, Peter and Lucy. Oh, wow. man, your cousins. cousins. By the way, um, Chibi is my cousin, so I'm like, wow, this, is, this works out. <laughs> Jewels with powers almost beyond human imagining have disappeared from a museum show in Paris. Or did the jewels ever even make it out of Africa? Hmm. And what does your uncle have to do with it? Tito? <laughs> it's time to buckle down to some old-fashioned detective work. But watch your back. P.I.s. All right. Halfway through your summer vacation, you get an urgent telegram from your cousins, Peter and Lucy. Telegram. How old is this book? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is here is the telegram. Need your help finding... Oh, it's also all in capitals. Wow. So I should... Should I shout it out? <laughs> Please don't. Need your help finding jewels of Nabuti. Fly to Boston at once. Bring passport. Danger. Be careful. Peter and Lucy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, sounds very urgent. Yeah. Thank you, Caps yeah. Lock. Yeah. You remember the jewels. Who could forget them? The two diamonds shone in, like the sun's reflection off a glacier, and the two rubies were like the eyes of a jungle creature at night. Peter's father had bought them from a trader in Morocco many years ago. And then there's a... Uh, Little picture Wait, so these here. are like our family jewels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so turn to the next page. All right. The trader had been nervous about the sale, but also anxious to get rid of the jewels. Two days later, Peter's father had returned to the Casbah to ask more about the jewels, only to find the stall closed. A small sign announced the sad and unfortunate death of the stallover, a Mr. Abdul Saeed. Right? Saeed? S-A-I-D. Saeed. Saeed, Saeed, right? Yeah. That same day, he received a letter at his hotel demanding the return of the jewels. The letter warned him that his life was in danger and if he did not, did not return them. He ignored the letter, but he always hinted about the strange and mysterious powers the stones held. Ooh, it's getting okay. Peter and Lucy tell you the jewels have been stolen from the museum show in Paris. Uh, what can you do to help your cousins find them? You pack your bags and leave your house in New Orleans and fly to Boston. Whoa, you live in New Orleans? Yeah, yeah. who knew? What do you suggest we do if I, I visit New Orleans? Uh, watch a New Orleans Pelicans game. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, I like basketball. <laughs> I guess. Uh, eat, I don't eat, think eat, this was around back then. Uh, in shit, the 70s. Eat seafood, I, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you glance over your shoulder, nervously searching for followers. Double check. Peter and Lucy meet you at the airport. Oh, they're so nice of them. They pick you up from the airport and everything. We don't have much time, Peter announces. If you agree to help, Take the plane to Paris tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow afternoon. From Paris, you'll fly to Morocco. You'll have to hurry. So is this my first option to help or not help? Um, my story can end right here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter, you complain. I don't understand what this is all about. That's you saying that, okay? You will when you read this letter here. It reads... The jewels of Namuti are four keys to the hidden wisdom and wealth of a secret African tribe. Those who have the jewels either enjoy health and fame or they suffer agony beyond belief. The current owners of the jewels must guard against their being lost or stolen. They must wait to hand them over to the appointed messengers of Nabuti. Loss of the jewels could mean death. Because it's capital, death. You are puzzled by the letter. Peter and Lucy try to reassure you. But the truth is that their lives have been threatened if they continue to search for the jewels. They have asked you to search for the jewels because you are unknown to the thieves. Okay. You'll be relatively safe, as safe as anyone can be on the trail of the jewels of Nabuti. So basically, I'm finding it by myself because those guys are like wanted. Yeah. <laughs> this goes to our first choice of uh, this podcast. If you agree to go on tomorrow's plane for Paris, go on to the next page. If you demand more time, information, and extra help, turn to page nine. Ooh. So your choices are you go on that plane to Paris. Or you demand more time, information, and extra help. Hmm. I don't know. Well, it's actually a really good choice. Uh, I, I've already got hooked with the whole <laughs> health and, and fame and money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, let's just let's just skip to page one. Let's just let's just go for it. Let's go, fly to you're Paris. Going to Paris. Yeah, I'll fly All to right. Paris next okay. Day. All right. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Fasten your seat belts, put your seat backs in an upright position, turn off all electronic devices. Flight 231 for Paris is now ready for takeoff. Oh, time out. What? They're telling me to turn off electronic devices even though they send me telegrams? Yeah. Wow. That's weird. You know, this is a, you know, way back when. The flight attendant explains 
about emergency procedures, but you listen with only half an ear. Then there is the roar of the jet engines as the plane rushes down the runway and leaps into the air. Turning away from the small plane window, you notice that the person sitting next to you is doodling on a pad. <gasps> Long, narrow fingers grasp a gold pen tightly. They are bloodless white. What is creepier still is that they have no nails. She's like a vampire. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't know if vampires don't have nails. You sneak, a, you sneak a closer look at his face and see eyes that reflect no light. Whoa. A thin mouth showing no lines at the corners and a closely shaven jaw. A mustache hides a scar that runs from the nostril to the corner of the mouth. You look down and see that the scribbles on the pad are diamond shaped. He's just drawing diamonds. He's just diamond. drawing diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like drawing diamonds. They seem to spell out the word... Nabuti. Oh, no. A shiver of fears races through you. This cannot be a coincidence. The person next to you certainly knows who you are. He, too, must be looking for the missing jewels. And it says, turn to page seven. Damn, I knew I should have waited for page nine. Yeah. Oh, that's all I want to add that there's some pretty cool drawings here. But fatigue no. overcomes your fear, and you fall into a troubled sleep. When you waken, you are over the English Channel, descending towards Paris. Would you care to share a taxi into Paris, my friend? It is the man next to you. You start at his words words as though a knife were trickling the back of your neck. Why, I, I, I don't know. Where are you going? It is a pretty lame way to delay your answer, but you need to do some fast thinking. The stranger fixes you with an eerie stare and says, We are searching for the same thing. I need your help, and you need mine. You have a sudden vision of a strange man beckoning you into his taxi. And this is the creepy dude. Oh, that's the creepy dude? Yeah, look at him. So he also owns the taxi? I, I guess so. Because he's driving. Yeah, he's it driving in this the picture. taxi. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's uh, okay. So it's poorly written. <laughs> if you accept his <laughs> offer for the cab ride, we're gonna turn to page eight. If you make excuses and refuse his, refuse his help, turn to page twelve. You gotta keep your enemies close, right? Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. This... He could be an enemy, but I'll do it. I'm gonna take his. Take, oh. He might help me, dude. He might help me. Okay. All Wait, right. Let me let me see his picture again. He might maybe he's not that creep. Oh, he just looks like a regular guy. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> Look at that teeth in his eyes. He's like come hither. The way he's like pointing with his fingers. Yeah, but he's got a cab. Also, I have no other leads into Nabuti to figure out these things for Nabuti. You know, okay. my stupid cousins didn't give me Jack. Yeah, that's true. They're like, hey, can you do this? And can yeah, you fly yeah, to Paris? Yeah, Peter and Lucy. So I mean, if this guy knows I'm searching for it, if you think about it. He already knows who I am. Now I should know who he is. Otherwise, he has all the information. Yeah, he looks creepy too. Yeah, but I mean, like, if I say no and wait, he'll probably just follow me and find me anyway. All right, so that's your choice, Mr. Epic Mode? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go Why with not? Stranger. Yeah. <laughs> You've made some, I think, poor decisions so far. Wait, wait. How old am I, though, in this book? I'm like my uh, age. It doesn't say anything. I, I could probably beat this guy up. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, you could oh, probably be there. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I imagine you're like a little kid because you're hanging out with your... Well, what kind of little kid goes That's flies true. by himself? You know, you're right. You're like you're like 25. Now. And also, also, what kind of man would go up to the little kid and be like, do you want to ride my cab with me? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for Nabuti. Yeah. <laughs> Nabuti? All right, is that your final yeah, choice? my final answer. All right, you accept his offer for the cab ride, and we are now turning to page eight. A row of taxis meet you at the entrance to the airport. You and your strange companion jump in one and roar off to the center of Paris. The ride is fast and dangerous. Your driver doesn't seem to think that there are any rules on to the road. Then you are standing on the sidewalk in front of a small cafe. Your companion motions to a waiter inside and tells you, One moment. All is ready. The waiter scurries away only to return a minute later with two glasses and a note asking you to meet a man named Molotawa at the table in the back of the restaurant. Molotawa, okay. Interesting. He is our contact here in Paris. Listen to what he says, just but be careful. Watch the doors and windows. Our enemies are about. Okay. Okay. All right. You have two choices right now, okay? If you take a seat on the left near the door, turn to page 16. If you sit with your back to the wall, Turn to page 18. So it's either I have an, I leave an opening with my door to my yeah, left. Yeah, but be careful. Watch the doors and windows. He's telling you to watch the doors and windows. Yeah. So if you take a seat on the left near the door, turn to page 16. If you sit with your back to the wall, turn to page 18. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I'd rather just sit with my back to the wall, right? You got to see what's coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be this. Doors. Be, all right, like, yeah. Uh, back, back to the wall. Back to the wall. Okay. So you sit your back to the wall. So we are going to page 18. 
All right. Okay. Booby trap. Dead. Uh, <laughs> you're dead. What? What the fuck? Uh, you remember reading somewhere that it is safest if you sit with your back to the wall. That way, no one can sneak up on you from behind. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. The waiter hovers over your table for a minute, taking your order. Then Molotawa appears. At least you assume that is Molotawa, Tawa, and takes a seat next to you. He's oh. a handsome man of about twenty-five years of age. He's, oh, he's like all right, your age. It's Not me. I, age. I'm, I'm twenty-eight. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's me. Handsome. There are tribal scars on his cheeks. Two rows of three lines each. Two rows of okay. He has stuff yeah. on his cheeks. Uh, the the <laughs> multicolored African shirt fits loosely over his frame. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. It's good that you came. Perhaps we can recover the lost jewels with each other's help. <clears throat> you nod in general agreement. But who are you? That's you asking. Molotawa looks at you for a moment and then says, I am prince of the ancient Nabuti tribe. We ruled a large region of Africa for many, many years before Africa was taken by European countries. We were fair and just. The jewels are a powerful symbol of our leadership. They have magic powers. They can confuse the evildoers and stop the bad. We must have them back to continue our work. You are impressed with his words and his princely bearing. If you wish, you can meet my father, the king, here in Paris. Or you can go now to Senegal, where my people are. <clears throat> Those are my options? So you have two options now. If you want to meet Molotawa's father, turn to page 34. If you decide to go to Senegal, turn to page 30. Hmm, where's his father again? Uh, it's in the... Uh, in the city? In yeah, Paris? in Paris, yeah. Or I go to Senegal. Yeah, if you wish, you can meet my father, the king, here in Paris. Or or meet the people? Or you can go now to Senegal, where my people are. I am. Oh, I am. <laughs> you, you, you're like, now this epic mode doesn't seem so... <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I think... I don't know. That's that's a tough one because it's like if I meet the king, maybe he's got bodyguards. Or maybe it's an ambush. This guy doesn't. <laughs> I like every moment you're doing this. You're like, oh my god, someone's gonna kill me. <laughs> well, I mean, you never know. You just it's set up epic mode, die. right? Well, also this guy's got three scars or whatever in his face. Yeah, it's not very king-like. I I, I mean, prince-like or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't see. He's got scars because he's like a battle prince. Yeah, you did Black Panther have any scars? No, uh, no, no, he didn't. He's, he's clean. Yeah, you know what? He's got adamantium. Uh... Like yeah, the and they got and jewels of Nabuti. Yeah, well, no, they don't. That's well, what we're I mean, finding. They, they would. <laughs> wow. Or, or I go to Senegal. Yeah, you go straight there. What am I going to do there, though? I, I think I should get more information from the king, I guess. I'll just go chill, You're gonna, chill with the king. Yeah, we're going to meet Molotawa's father. Yeah. All right, final answer? Yeah, final answer. All right, 34. <laughs> am I dead? <laughs> Is there a picture? Am I dead? <laughs> Unfortunately, you never meet with Molotawa's father. While waiting for the metro subway to take you across Paris to oh, the king, no. two men posing as street musicians push you off the platform. You fall onto the third rail, electrocuted. It's all over for you. Too bad. The end. Wow, seriously? <laughs> yeah, dude, God damn it. I didn't even die from the okay, king. I just okay. got... Dude, that's that's like the ultimate cop-out. <laughs> They're just like, hey, we need to make one of these two random choices a way for you to die. And I didn't even get killed by the king i literally just got yeah. pushed by street dancers oh yeah An epic mode uh one back you're okay let's just all right okay back. let's say you didn't win this you're not gonna get any of the well, prizes i get you didn't even say there were prizes well yeah i guess you know i was saying epic mode it was like no lives the adventure's over so <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna go back <laughs> And change the decision. Yo, because that's... <laughs> We're going to change... There was our... a picture. Was there a picture of me being electrocuted? Is that why you started laughing? No, no, no. Or it just said, it like, just, It said the end. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. in bold. Dude, um, that's so... That's so dumb. <laughs> Let's say you're doing this in normal mode. So you got one more life after this. Yeah, yeah. Not the easy... The one The one where I just have the one life. I have oh, one. you're going to do hard mo- mode? Yeah. Let's okay. Just, just so, so one, one, one back. Okay. So you got so I got I got to go to Senegal now. <laughs> you got pushed off a platform. Yeah, by people I don't even know, right? right. I, I get nothing out of the story. Like, I don't even know if this yeah, guy yeah. was really a I know, a it's not prince. enough. All the listeners are like, what the fuck? I want to know more about this. Yeah. Man, this guy made some poor life choices. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die again. It's like, wait, fuck it. I'm going to go back to easy one. <laughs> the, the worst would be is if both choices led to my death. Yeah, I feel the, like it doesn't. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, they wouldn't. Anyways. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to Senegal. We're going. That's the original. Answer. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm sorry. No, I, I heard. I heard wrong. I heard wrong. My bad. Yeah. 
I said we shouldn't see the king. <laughs> Senegal, a beautiful country on Africa's Atlantic coast, was a French colony until its independence almost 50 years ago. It has been relatively peaceful with a healthy economy. You soon find yourself in Dakar, the busy and colorful capital of this West African country. Come with me, my friend. Here in Dakar, you will be safe. All the people know of the jewels of Nabuti. We will be helped whenever we ask for it. Just as you enter the Grand Hotel, a siren shrieks and both of you spin out about to see a car scream around the corner. It's headed right for the hotel, only there's a problem. There's no one in it. It smashes into the hotel lobby and barely misses you and Molotawa. All right, two choices here. So no one was driving the car? Uh, no, no one, yeah. No, there's no one in there. And it smashes into the hotel lobby and barely misses you. So they have self-driving cars. And it seems like Molotawa is helping you out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm starting to think that, that uh, maybe the dad is evil. Then why would he send me to his dad if Molotawa was trying to help me out? Yeah, but Molotawa clearly died because he got pushed off the platform. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that we, we technically should... I mean, I guess we could, should know that if we had the one life. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Yeah, because you're on hard mode now. <laughs> yeah. You restarted and decided that you're on hard mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two choices. Was this an accident? If you think it was, turn to page 50. If you think it was not an accident, then we ch- turn to page 48. Well, damn. Now that I... I don't know, man. I don't think any of this is an accident. I'm just yeah. saying right there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like now I got to play on the defensive yeah, yeah. because I got just I just got pushed off. Oh, well, now, now it never happened. That's, well, uh, uh, let's just be suspicious about this guy. Let's yeah. be like, yo, what's up? 48. We are going to page 48. Oh, no. It's going to say the end. I don't know. Okay. Um... <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> this was a phony accident if you ever saw one. Two policemen arrive and explain that it was a terrible mistake. The police driver stepped out of the car and forgot to put on the emergency brake, they say. They are embarrassed and they apologize for the accident. You are not satisfied with the quick explanation and apology. Something is wrong. You decide to examine the wrecked car. Right? <laughs> and they just let me, right? Yeah. The police is like, well, please, please, yeah. private eye. <laughs> okay, this one gets you three choices. Ooh. So listen up. You cross the lobby to the car and open the car door. Pinned to the steering wheel is a note with her name on it. It reads, we won't give up. Go back where you belong. With my name on it. Uh, yeah. Ooh. There is a sign of two crosses at the bottom. You are not sure what it means, but you are sure that it spells nothing good for you. This was certainly no accident. The moment you leave the hotel, you are surrounded by hotel officers who claim that this police car was stolen only minutes before. One of them says, the note is addressed to you. You must come with us to police headquarters. Stealing an official car is serious business. You protest, but they refuse to listen to you. Off you go to see the commissioner of the police. Should you tell them about the lost jewels, or should you pretend that you know nothing? You decide to come clean and tell the whole story. Wait, wait, so I don't even have a choice? I tell this whole... Oh my god, the police are obviously (laughs) in it. Yeah, I guess uh, that's not a choice you make. Yeah. This wow. this guy, this guy that possesses you, <laughs> says, I'll tell you everything. Please, just don't put me in jail. The chief of police listens politely to your story. He tells you that he, too, believes in the jewels in the booty and that he will help you recover them. Allow me to introduce you to my aide, Obesa Sol One, a Senegalese from the north by the Senegal River. You shake hands with Obesa. He presents you with three options in your quest. Well, three. You can consult a shaman on page 68. Ooh, I like that one. (laughs) Or you can try to contact the Nabuti tribe directly by going to page 70. Or you can search in the car by going to page 72. So search the car, contact Nabuti, or contact the shaman. Well, (laughs) first of all, what was option two again? You can contact the Nabuti tribe directly by going to page 70. Okay. And so his daughter, the police dude's daughter, is from... She's from Senegal as well, and that's where the yeah. Nabuti tribe is. So she's probably part of the Nabuti tribe. Though. Yeah. So. So what are you thinking? You can, yeah. There's consulting a shaman. I don't know what that's gonna do, but I guess this is all like mysterious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I think you know my answer. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see the shaman. Does it explain where the shaman is? Uh, no, it just says consult the shaman. <laughs> that's such an, an off answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's let's consult the shaman. Okay, we are gonna <laughs> consult the shaman. 
You are adventurous, no doubt about that. Ooh, a shaman yes. is another word for a witch doctor. Yeah, I know that. You and Hobessa <laughs> rent an old Land Rover and drive out to the city. Within kilo- 20 kilometers of the car, the road turns to the deep. Red clay-like earth, so characteristic of equatorial Africa. Huge wow. trees, some over 30 meters in height, shade the road. Road not the best, but we will be there by nightfall. You want some papaya juice? Is that an option for me no, to drink it? No, no. no. <laughs> it is Obessa talking. You shake your head, then change your mind and accept a cup of the sweet, odd-tasting juice. The Land Rover bumps along, and finally you arrive at a small village. There are 23 circular huts of roughly the same size. They surround a slightly larger hut. Is It is to this larger hut that you and Obessa head. Oh, man. Okay, and then we're turning to page 67. I'm going backwards in the mm, book. Yeah, well, maybe there is a way that I could have gotten oh. that hut beforehand. Yeah. You have to stoop to enter. Sitting in the darkness is an old man. He is dressed in a simple, worn khaki shirt and shorts. He is barefoot. The old man does not even look up at you. His eyes are closed. I have been waiting for you. He hands you a black cup with six chicken bones, two parrot feathers, and the tooth of a hyena. Throw these on the floor! You do as he commands, and the bones, feathers, and tooth form a pattern that is barely discernible in the dim light. He opens his eyes and studies the pattern of the object. Then he says, The mountains of the moon bear the secret of your search. But so too do the upper waters of the great Zaire River. And I'm sure I (laughs) pronounced that wrong. (laughs) Look for the sign of the snake and the mask of the crocodile. I feel like you need to remember that. Uh... Yeah, sign of the snake and the, the mask, mask of, of the... Cro- yeah, yeah, I got okay. it. You remember that? Yeah, sure. You need to write this down? No, dude. Yeah, sure. You're going to be like, ah, shit. Uh, sign of that? the snake and mask of the crocodile. Yeah. Right? If... Okay, so... Uh, you have two options, okay? If you go to the mountains of the moon... Turn to page 90. If you travel to the headwaters of the Zari River... Turn to page 92. Can you read his prophecy again okay. or whatever? <laughs> okay, I'll just say it. Just say it regularly. <laughs> the mountains of the moon bear the secret of your search, but so too do the upper waters of the great Tyree River. Look for the sign of the snake and the mask of the crocodile. Sign of the snake and mask of the crocodile. Yeah. Now, what do you think is more dangerous, a river or a mountain? I don't know. Do you like swimming or do you like climbing? I don't really like swimming, so let's probably just head to the mountains, man. All right. The mountains of the moon we are going. Page 90. Oh, no. Dead. Landslide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Page 90. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. I'm alive? Yeah, it's a lovely picture of, like, just a mountain. Oh. Thing. Wow, great. The mountains of the moon are in the... Ruenzori mountain chain. Only a few years ago, these high peaks were snow-covered. A truly rare sight in tropical Africa. But now, with the climate warning, sub-Saharan Africa is losing the snow that once crowned its highest peaks. You and Ubesa travel by plane, truck, and finally foot until you stand at the base of the highest peak in the Ruenzori. A lot of cardio going on. Yeah, yeah. The tropical forest is brilliant, shining green, and the flowering plants flash yellow and red. Giant ferns and huge plants surround you and Ubesa. You have heard that there is a, s- a guide service to the peaks of the mountains of the moon, but when you reach the small wooden hut with the rusty metal roof, no one is there. On a wooden table inside the hut is a map of the main peaks showing routes and several overnight huts. One is marked in red. Underneath it is a crude line draw- drawing of four jewels. You look at each other. A rat scurries across the earthen floor of the hut. Far off there is the sound of drums. Wow. Dum, 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 dum. The beat is steady, rich, and hypnotic. You decide to wait for the guide. Is, what's the name of the girl again? She had uh, the princess U- of the Ubes- Ubesa, Ubesa, right? Yeah, uh, I, I assume so. Hmm, yeah. Maybe one of these days we'll do like an erotic one that'd be kind of fun to do. <laughs> oh, uh, not not with cousins, <laughs> <laughs> not with you, Jim. Do it, do it. <laughs> I think you should touch her in the booty. <laughs> The afternoon shadows soon fall across the small glade. It is dark underneath the giant ferns and trees. The drums have not ceased. Occasionally, you hear the sounds of birds and other animals. Ubesa, I don't like this. I mean, what are we doing here? You don't even know what we are looking for. 
Ubesta turns, stares at the darkening jungle, and says, It is too early to tell. Ooh. Wow. You point to the map on the table and the drawing of the jewels. Okay, so we head there, but what then? I mean, way up in the mountains? Look, the place Mark is at the 14,000 foot level. Damn. He agrees. He. Ubesta is a dude. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> he said he agrees, and the two of you choose Ice Axe. Yeah. I yeah. thought Obessa was the daughter of No, the... no. I, mean, I guess it's a, it's a dude. Oh. <laughs> he agrees, and the two of you choose Ice Axes, ropes, packs, and crampons. What are cramp- crampons? <laughs> From the supply stack in the door of the room. <laughs> How weird to have prepared for an alpine climb in Africa. You trudge off, following the path through the ferns. The crampons clank in the pack. The rope feels heavy on your shoulders. After an hour, you notice the ferns are gone, and scrub brush dots the landscape. Rocks and cliffs soar in front of you. The trail changes to, ro- to rocks you must scramble up. Then you are on a cliff. You and Ubessa, I think it was just the name, you're like, oh, Bessa? <laughs> Sounds like a girl's name. Inch up the face, rope together. The going is difficult. Yowie, you slip. Yeah, yeah. Knuckles we. smash against the rough rock. Blood bubbles to the surface. The rope attached to the Ubesa Toddens stretches and holds. You are safe. You huddle against the rock face, catching your breath. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Almost died there. Yeah. It wasn't even my choice. Uh, what's amazing is that I'm really good at rock climbing, apparently. Yeah. W- what do I do for a living? Yeah. I'm some sort gonna... of PI who lives in New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. And. Yalins. And I don't know. I, I know how to rock yeah. climb, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And I have a Eat them po' boys. Advanced skill set in Yeah, no, I mean, life. this... I'm going to be honest. This guy's way more awesome than you. Yeah. I mean, this version of you is way cooler. I did start off this podcast yeah. with saying I'm unemployed. Yeah. Yeah. At the top of the cliff, you leave the rock face, cross snow fields, and s- climb steeply. The sun beats down on you. It reflects on the snow and blinds you. You have no sunglasses. Then you see it. It is a small mountain hut made out of aluminium. Aluminium. (laughs) Aluminium. It's an emergency shelter. Across the doorway are three chicken bones and two dead mice. Ubesa screams, stop! Don't touch! This is magic. It is a curse and a warning. It means it is death to enter. (gasps) I should enter it. Okay, so if you ignore the warning and go into the hut, you turn to page 123. If you heed Ubesa and refuse to enter... Turn to page 124. I feel like the obvious answer is to obviously not go to it, but I still... Can you just remember what the page number is so I can see it later? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's 123 and 124, right? Okay. (laughs) Shit. I I will heed the warning and and not go into the... Oh, wait. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should go in. Can you you read my options again? Yeah. uh, If you heed... Uh, if you ignore the warning and go into the hut, turn to page 123. If you heed Obessa and refuse to enter, turn to page 124. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> Mark, I need your help. Yeah, please, please. Um, your choice. Oh, shit. Uh, I guess... Uh, I'll, I'll just pick the don't enter one. Don't enter. Yeah, obviously. If you heed Obessa and refuse to enter, turn to page 124. Uh, uh, uh. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Ubesa says it is not good. A curse like this means that we are still being followed. One of us will go for help. One of us will stay here. You hesitate, but finally agree. With the flip of a coin, you decide who stays and uh, stays watch and who goes down for more help. You win. <clears throat> you go to the mountain, but you step on an ice pitch and tumble into a deep crevice, crevasse. Uh, and I'm dead. There's no way out. Ubesa sits alone and waits for you. The end. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to I, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Can we just read what 123 said? 123, just... okay. You cross the threshold. Nothing happens. Your eyes grow accustomed Fuck, to the Fuck, I knew gloom. I should have picked that one. It is a small hut with enough room for six people in sleeping bags. A typical high altitude mountaineering hut. There's a low table in the center. You and Obes approach it. There they are. The fabled jewels of Nabuti. Oh, wow. I would have won. Yeah. Two rubies as red as the glistening tongue of a cobra and two diamonds that shimmer like sunlight reflecting on a mirror. Yunabusa stare in disbelief. You reach out to touch them. Zonk! You're hit with a bolt of lightning. The jewel in the lightning momentarily paralyzes you. The jewels of Nabuti vanish. The sky is clear of clouds. You will never lay hands on the jewels. The end. Is that a good ending or a bad ending? I feel like that's a bad ending yeah i guess no one also ever hands like on that last page where i died where i did die they said i won the coin toss yeah 
It, my choice would just to, to be waiting. I obviously suck at rock climbing if I almost fell last time. Yeah. Why would I be the one to go down? If I won yeah. the toss, I would just... I would stay. <laughs> You're just angry now. Well, I mean, this book's dumb. <laughs> Fucking... They don't explain what Nabuti is. I mean... Well, because you weren't smart. You didn't investigate in the beginning. You went straight for the adventure. Yeah. Yeah. YOLO. I blame you. And you know, we're not going to do this another time because it's game over. Yeah, obviously I'm dead. Yeah. I just want to see what a good ending is. <laughs> I guess you can find out... Uh, when we do another episode of this, maybe we'll do like a re. Wow, re. like all these other endings sound way, way better than yeah, yeah. falling off into a crevasse <laughs> and, and, and well, suffering. It was like because I looked at both of them because they were right beside each other. I was yeah. like, I wonder which one he's going to pick. Oh, Either and, way, and ended. Either. <laughs> so. No, well, they're all endings at this point, right? Yeah. But I want to know what leads up to this. You, Lucy, and Raul? Raul? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have so many other cool people. Who the fuck's Raul? <laughs> you, Lucy, like and said, Raul arrive at the address, and all three of you look at one another with fear and excitement. You are met by a giant a giant in a float. Yeah, yeah, you missed out. A, a giant! I could have met a giant <laughs> in a flowing gray and brown robe. He glares at you and pushes you into the shop. Before you can do anything, the three of you are handcuffed and get... Oh, no, I think I died this one. <laughs> it, it's a lot of it. You will be and... held as hostages for the jewels of Nabuti. We set a six day time period, then it sets off with then it is set off with your heads. Five days pass, no words. This is the middle of the sixth day. The end. Oh no. Well I mean I, a, I imagine there's a way more death. Yeah, but I, I would much rather die meaning a giant and Raul than be like, oh because <laughs> you thought Ubessa was a girl. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Obessa was a girl. Well, what he it said he. Yeah, that could be a typo because I'm pretty sure you said it was his daughter. Right? No, I didn't. Uh, you assumed it was a daughter. He just said Obessa, the helper. I thought Obessa was the policeman's kid. No, no. Oh, what the? F- well, yeah, huh? a kid, but they didn't say girl or boy. We just assumed that because we think that we're you know, we just we can't just assume everyone's just a guy. But yeah. apparently, you know, this book written in the 70s or 80s. Was this an accident? If you think it was, turn to page 50. If you think it was not an accident, turn to page 48. What did I pick? It was not It was not an accident, right? Yeah. So that's 48. I'm just going to backtrack to see if this <laughs> Ubessa is a dude or not. <laughs> You're just, just angry. Because you want to hang out with Oh Raul. No, you know it's dumb? I just realized that it said either pa- um, turn to page 38 yeah. or, or 50, right? Yeah. But if you go to page 48, they'll tell you to go to page 50 anyway. Huh. And just add a little bit of a... A little, uh... Yeah. Oh, we won't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can consult a shaman on page 68. Oh, shit. I already missed the whole... Whatever, whatever. Well, this is a great episode. It's a good... <laughs> Next uh, episode, we're going to have Chibi read out uh, the book, and then I'll, I'll do the spacing. Yeah, and then we can do up. an epic one where uh, you have no <laughs> life. I'm, I, I'm not going to be like you. I'm not going to be dumb. I'll at least get one life mode. All right, I'll do let's hard let, mode. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do hard mode. hard mode. All right, okay, cool. Let's do hard mode. All right, see you next episode where you play another um, game. So, yeah. see ya. Goodbye.